Observatory. Great, just wanted to make sure we had you at the right place. So we're really excited to have you here. So I'll give you a little brief overview of how our afternoon and evening will go, okay? So first we'll take you up to the top of the hill. It's a lovely spot to see in the Botanic Gardens. So you'll get to wander around the gardens. You do have a couple hours there to wander around. It's pretty self-guided, so there's a lot of signs around telling you about different plants, and a lot of it's really just enjoying the beauty of those plants that are there. The uh, Wellington Botanic Gardens, it is a 25 hectare property. It was first established in 1868, at that point it was only 5 hectares, and it composed a native forest, but it was also used as a place to test out new species, to see how viable they might be for the New Zealand environment and economy. So. That's, it started as five hectares, and then eventually expanded to what we have today to be to 25 hectares. So you do have a variety of different types of plants and uh, ecosystems in there. So there is native forest. It is a protected reserve for native forest but there are also introduced plants as well. We have a conifer forest and certain specialist um, plant collections as well. So those are some of the key features of the garden. We have a Victorian style glass house for housing those that need a little bit more warmth for them. It's a little bit tropical inside. We also have the begonia house, and then you also have the Lady Norwood Rose Garden, which is, yes, supremely stunning. Just, it's in bloom right now as well, so you have like a perfect time. And then we also have the Treehouse Visitor Center. So there's a lot to do and a lot to see, and so you'll have plenty of time to go around and see all the different plants and the gorgeous native trees. Yeah. So that will be the afternoon. That will take you through sunset. So you get to see sunset in the garden here at the top of the hill. It's a gorgeous place to view it from. After the sun sets, and then we'll take you, it's just a short two minute walk over to the Carter Observatory. So the Carter Observatory is named for a man with the surname of Carter, and he donated 2,240. 2,240 pounds back in the 1800s because he wanted to establish um, an astronomical society here in New Zealand. And so that's when they first established the observatory. So after it was originally established, it initially mainly focused in on solar investigation. But in 1977, it was expanded and has been named as the National 
Observatory for New Zealand. And so now it investigates things such as variable stars, distant galaxies, asteroids, and that sort of thing. So a lot more variety there as well. We do also have the Cook Telescope here, which you can go and have a look through. And that is a period telescope, kind of giving us a little piece to the past to see how astronomy used to be done. But this nowadays is a state-of-the-art facility, which is used for observing and doing research and th that sort of thing. It's a great place to explore how the technology in space is actually impacting on our life here. <laughs> down on the surface, yeah. So, you will get to go through there. Uh, there's a few little exhibits. There's one where you can kind of play, send off a rocket, and that sort of thing. So it's a fun little spot. But then we'll actually take you into the planetarium as well, and you'll get to see a show. So the show we have for you is called uh, Dynamic Earth. That's the show that's on tonight. And so this is a great one. It's got these very expansive views of some really neat things happening here on Earth, particularly with impacts on the climate and that sort of thing. But you've got um, just, it's a very wide open view of these particular things that you'll see. So you'll see things such as um, swirling ocean and wind currents and you get to dive down in in the camera shot and see the heart of a hurricane. So that's quite neat. And then you also get to go through the ocean and see sharks and swim along with gigantic whales and also fly over an erupting volcano. Yeah, so the footage is quite spectacular though and the way it presents in the planetarium is quite neat. After the video portion is completed, there is a live planetarium presentation done as well. So depending on what the cloud cover is like, they are actually able to open the roof so that you can expand and see the heavens themselves. And it is run by an astronomer, so it's all very accurate, very detailed information but they are good entertainers as well, so they tell you some good stories about not just how Western society these days uses the stars, but also introducing you to Maori legends and how they use those uh, particularly for their uh, New Year's celebrations and that sort of thing and also how they use them for navigation. And they'll point out to you particular constellations of interest in our southern sky here. So it's quite a neat, unique little spot and I think it's really exciting. So they will try to open um, the roof if we can but obviously it is a planetarium and so they can go through and show you all of those features on the ceiling of the planetarium itself. And that is actually really good for pointing out particular features because laser pointers and that sort of thing work much better <laughs> on the ceiling than on the night sky. So they will point those things out to you. They can also journey around for you if you want to see a little bit of the northern sky and that sort of thing. So it does tend to be guided a bit by what the audience is interested in. So if you do have a particular interest area, 
feel free to say something and they will definitely uh, address that in their presentation. Okay? So that's what we have for you tonight. I think it was a really, really good and exciting areas to explore while you're here with us. So we'll just head on up. We'll take the cable car up to the top of the hill and then that's where you'll be able to begin your journey <laughs> through the botanic gardens and then 